Welcome back everybody. Our next topic here is multicast receiver signaling. So we are continuing on that topic and we'll be discussing IGMP version 3 in this particular lecture. Now I highly, highly encourage you to go back and listen to the IGMP version 1 and version 2 lectures because there is a lot of material that we covered over there that we'll briefly touch upon in here. So I'm not going to rehash this. Uh, we're basically going to focus on the enhancements that IGMP version 3 really brings to the table and not reinvent the wheel with IGMP version 1 and version 2. So there, you may find some of the information missing, but I assure you that information is available in the IGMP version 1 and version 2 lecture. So this is really just an augmentation to that particular lecture. So Internet Group Membership Protocol version 3. Now this is the latest implementation of IGMP, but this is probably not the most common implementation. Its, uh, its use is still somewhat limited. And for the vast majority of cases, you would still see IGMP version 1 and version 2 being used. Version 2 probably being the most common uh, implementation. Now, IGMP version 3 adds one major feature. That, that was the whole reason for the invention or for, the, uh, for devising this particular protocol. And it allows for signaling source-specific information. So source-specific information along with the group. So which group do you want to receive? And that was the main point of IGMP version 1 and version 2, which group does the receiver want to be a member of? But in this implementation, you also get to signal which source you may want to receive that group from. And now this was not even possible in IGMP version 1 and version 2, because if you look at the packet format, there is no space, there is no field for you to signal the actual source. And ultimately, the enhancement was uh, really designed for the use of source specific multicast in the actual multicast core. So in this particular case, you are able, the receiver would now be able to signal to the last hop router, which particular source it wants to receive traffic from or receive a particular gr group from. So if you think about it, it is no different than just uh, signaling an S comma G. So that S comma G had to start somewhere and this is where it's starting. This is how the receiver would initially signal that S comma G. And what that allows the sword, what that allows the last hop router or the LHR to do is to actually signal a source base tree or an SPT through or a shortest path tree, source tree, shortest path tree rooted at the source in the multicast core. So now the PIM in the multicast core or the multicast route, uh, routing protocol in the core can actually build a tree to the source because you actually have specific information about the source IP. Now we would be talking about that in a separate lecture, but right now just realize that this information is now available to the last hop router and it can use it. Now the protocol it does go beyond providing just a simple mechanism for SSM. It would have been easy just to add a source field and there you go, source comma G, S comma G, now signal. There are additional mechanisms provided. For example, there is a mechanism to exclude certain groups. So non S comma G, I don't know. If you want to not receive, say, a particular multicast for a group from a particular source, so you can say source specific multicast, you only want to receive from that source, or you may choose to exclude that source. So you do not want to receive from that source, although you want to keep receiving multicast packets on a group, but you just don't want it from a certain source. So there is provision now in the protocol to, to do that. It enables you to do that. There is also a new multicast address now, and this is exclusively for membership reports. So version one and version two only worked on the actual group. So the group's multicast address, and that's where the reports were sent to, or dot one and dot two. So those were all systems multicast or all routers multicast. In this particular case, there is a brand new, mess, uh, brand new 
multicast address and it is 224.0.0.22. Now this is exclusively for the use of IGMP version 3 routers. So all of the routers now listen to this particular signaling and what it allows the, the receiver to do and in the implementation to do is to streamline a lot of what was done in separate messages in IGMP version 1 and version 2. And we'll talk about it in detail. Another thing it allows uh, for the streamlining off is something called IGMP snooping. Now I'll just give you a sneak preview on what IGMP snooping is. It is essentially the layer 2 switches sitting in the middle between a receiver and a laptop router and it allows them to build states on the switchboard so that they don't have to treat multicast as, as broadcast anymore. We will be doing a separate lecture on IGMP snooping and at that time you'd realize that 224.0.0.22 makes IGMP snooping a little bit more efficient. How about backwards compatibility? Well, the good news is IGMP version 3 completely backwards compatible with version 1 and version 2. And it is done in a, uh, in a variety of different ways. So number one, IGMP version 2 and version 1 messages. So if there is a native host on that segment and they only understand version 1 and version 2 and they send these messages, these messages can still be processed by IGMP version 3 uh, routers. So this should not be hosts, this should actually be IGMP version 3 routers. So the LHRs. So if you do receive an IGMP version 2 and version 1 message, the router simply just processes it and it makes use of that information. Those particular messages, those membership reports, those uh, the queries, the uh, I'm sorry, the membership reports and the leave messages are the only things coming from the hosts, correct? They can be encapsulated either natively, so they can just be encapsulated in version 1 and version 2 packets, or alternatively, they can be encapsulated in version 3 packets. Just as long as the type remains same, uh, they would still be processed by the version 3 routers. Now finally, IGMP version 3 also provides these mechanisms, so join group, leave group, all of those things, everything that version 1 and version 2 is, were doing, and it provides a way to do that natively. So you do not have to rely on, uh, on version 1 and version 2 message types. You can actually use pure version 3 uh, to replicate all of those functions, and that's replicating those functions uh, and to teach you about it and tell you about it that is the main goal of this particular lesson so let's let's get right into it the very first message here is the IGMP version 3 membership report and if I haven't told you already you need to look at the version 1 version 2 lecture to, to really understand what's going on here because if you don't frankly you would miss on a lot of information that was disseminated in that particular lecture so this lecture is really just an augmentation lecture i can't repeat that enough times now the membership report these are now version 3 joins if you think about it so those were version 2 joins, this is, these are version 3 joins, essentially how the receivers signal their interest in a group and how they really join the multicast group and start receiving that traffic. Again, who is being signaled? It's the last hop router, the multicast router on the local segment is being signaled to start sending uh, the packets for this group down to the actual receivers. The multicast router listens to all of the multicast traffic and it will listen to this join but in this particular case it is specifically tuned to 224.0.0.22 and we'll see why that's important. Let's get to the IP packet of this. What does the actual IP packet look like? There is a source IP. Again, this is the host configured IP, not much has changed here. But the destination now is 224.0.0.22. This eliminates the one report per group requirement that was really present in version 1 and version 2. So if you remember, version 1 and version 2 membership reports, they were really just multicasted to the group that the the receiver wanted to join so if you wanted to join say 100 groups 
you really had to send a hundred different messages. Uh, there's a couple of different reasons for this, so hundred different reports. And number one is because each report could, it had field for only a single group. So that would necessitate that. But also you're multicasting that on the group address. So if it's a hundred, then you have to multicast it on a hundred different group addresses. In this particular case, you can just send a single report and you would send it on 224.0.0.22. And we will see that there are provisions in the protocol that actually allow for multiple groups now to be included in a single report. But all of that had to begin with a destination IP that was unified. So now it is unified and you can really go ahead and put multiple groups in a single report. That's a big enhancement for ITMP version three. As for the IP options, the router alert IP option still stays. So essentially it makes sure that the last hop router will process this message. The multicast router will accept this packet because frankly it is listening to 224.0.0.22. In fact, multicast routers on the segment are the only uh, entities that actually should be listening to this. The other receivers should not be listening to this. So that mechanism will change a little bit as well. Now the packet structure is more complex than IGMP version one and version two, and it really does need a separate slide of its own. So there, there's just so much data in it. Now here is the packet structure for the membership report. As you can see there, if you compare it one-on-one -on -one with the IGMP version one and version two reports, they, really did not have some of these fields. All I believe they had was the type, the reserved, the checksum, and then a group. So if you think about it, all of the stuff that I am putting here in, uh, let's pick blue. So all of the fields that I'm putting in blue were the only fields that were really present in uh, version one and version two. So finally there was just a group record. So those fields, that would create a uh, version one and version two packet. In this case, you can see that there is one extra field, one extra field that is available. And that field is there to inform the last hop router as to how many records is this report actually carrying. So now this particular field here, this M, allows the receivers to signal multiple group records in a single packet. So you can imagine now this could be a hundred and then you could have a hundred different groups that are being signaled here. So now what is contained inside the group? Well, I haven't shown you that yet. And I haven't shown you that yet because it does change as well. So remember that whole idea about SSM and having having the information about the actual sources for these groups? Well, here it comes. This is the, the inside structure of the actual group record. And again, you can see this is far more complex and has much more data than, well, you know, this was just simply the multicast address. It was a 32-bit field and it contained the multicast address in version one and version two. Here, a lot more. Number one, there is a field called the record type. Now record type is something that I'll have to discuss separately. So I'll, I'll table that issue for right now. Uh, there is an auxiliary data length and that data length here, it, it just has to do with what data is carried here. The good news is this is almost always going to have a zero in it because as per my reading of the last RFC, you're not supposed to really use the auxiliary data yet. So they haven't come up with a use for this. So this is zero and that takes two fields completely. The fields in blue, ignore them. The next field here is uh, the number of sources field. Now this is the field that adds the power of SSM to ITMP version three. What happens in this particular field is it tells you how many sources does this packet actually carry. So there is a group, this is a group record and it has a number of sources that, that you're passing information for. What we do with that information is really dependent on the record type. So I'll have to talk about that before I disseminate what it actually does. But for now, know that there are 
separate uh, source addresses. So if you look at this field, the green field, that has information about all of these right here. So each one of these is an IP address. Each one of these is a 32-bit field and each one of these is an IP address and you carry n number of this and the n number is specified in the number of sources. Finally, which group are you signaling? So that part has not changed. So finally, the group, it's right here. This would be the multicast IP. Multicast IP. So one multicast IP, multiple sources for that multicast IP. So now this, I have essentially signaled either one or maybe multiple S comma G states. And finally, so multiple S comma G states for one group and then multiple S comma G states for multiple groups because if you realize each one of these could have many more source records in it. So really it's, it's much more flexible, it's a lot more streamlined and you can signal a lot more information as, as is, should be pretty apparent here. And we'll talk more about what the actual report structure looks like but for that first we have to talk about this particular field, which I repeated again, is the record type field. So let's look at the record type field. This is a new field, as I said, in IGMP version 3. It has never existed before. There was really, they never saw a need for it back in version 1 and version 2. But this is a new field. It is there to provide greater flexibility. So greater flexibility as a whole to IGMP version 3 make it a, a lot more streamlined than its counterparts. And it essentially includes the ability to signal not only SSM, but also AS ASM, so any source multicast, source specific multicast, but also to exclude certain groups. Finally, now it allows the report to also carry the leave group message. So remember, leave group message was a separate message back in the days of IGMP version 1 and version 2. Now, you can use a single report to also carry that message, courtesy of the record type field. So the very first thing to understand, and this has, this has something to do with record type, but this is also overarching concept of IGMP version 3, and that is the actual filter mode that is being used. So there is a new property called filter mode and it is being used and record type will actually reflect that. So they can be two separate filter modes. There can be an include filter mode or there can be an exclude filter mode. These are the only two. So I promise you that's all you have to remember and memorize here. So include and exclude. And what include means is that you're requesting the multicast source, I'm sorry, multicast stream, but you're requesting it only from the sources included. So remember that whole long field that was with every multicast address and I have a snippet of it here. So this was the actual group record and it had a multicast address and it had many of these source addresses depending on the number of sources up here. So it had n number of these records. So now the include mode would say that you can receive this multicast stream, so you can receive this group, but only from the sources that are listed here. So only from those sources. That is the whole concept of in include, include mode. So only from those sources. As opposed to that, the exclude mode simply says the opposite. So exclude mode says that um, the multicast stream is requested only from the sources excluded from the record. Well, that sounds kind of uh, forced, so I will say in other words, if you read that carefully, what it essentially means is you want the multicast stream from all sources except the ones you've listed. So exclude the ones you've listed, include everything else in the world. So you're essentially asking the LHR to not send the multicast stream from some of the sources, but send it from all of the other sources. Uh, read that over and you would real realize that this is exactly what it is. So read that in other words until it kind of gels. 
Now we come to the actual record types. Now that we know what those modes are, so that's the important part, now we come to the record type. So first of all, there is something called the current state record. So remember, in any multicast, uh, multicast is mostly soft state, especially in enterprise networks. So that means the state has to be refreshed over and over again. And there would be something called steady state signaling. This is essentially the receivers periodically telling the, uh, the LHRs which records or which streams they're still interested in. So the current state record would have this whole thing. So it would contain this whole record of groups, of sources, etc. But you have to tell the last operator what is the expected uh, property. So what is the expected filter mode for that particular group, whether the mode is include or whether the mode is exclude. Because remember, include is completely the opposite of exclude. So in steady state signaling, in your periodic signaling, the receiver would really tell the LHR what is the actual mode, how to read that particular record that is going out, whether you read it as include mode or whether you read it as exclude mode. Now, at times, you would have to change the mode. So suppose you were SSM and all of a sudden now you decide to be ASM or something of to that nature, or you love the source and all of a sudden now you hate the source and you love all the other sources. For that particular thing, you may need to change your filter mode. So filter mode change is when the mode of a particular group changes. Now this is still dependent on group or a bunch of groups. And if you change multiple groups, then it would be multiple groups. So you may change from exclude to include mode, which would be this change to include mode, or you may change from include to exclude mode, which would be change to exclude mode. So that is when the filter mode or the, the filter mode for a particular group changes and you need to signal that. So that would be change to include or change to exclude mode. Now, finally, this list of sources, this may change. You may add a source, you may dislike a source and you may block one of the sources. So this is the source list change record. And this is really when sources for a group change or you mind about those sources changes. So you may allow new sources or you may decide to block some of the old sources. So if you want to add a source, you would allow new source. And if you wanted to block more source, uh, block sources, uh, you would block some of the old sources. That brings us to the next message type, which is the membership query. This is how version three routers, it's, it's, it essentially plays the same part in version three that it did in version one and version two. And this is how the multicast routers will update the IGMP states. So IGMP again is a soft state. If it is not updated periodically, those groups would then not be considered for multicast anymore. You would remove those groups from the oil, the outgoing interface list and uh, the receiver will not receive those uh, the, the stream, the multicast stream anymore. Again, this is sent to all of the multicast hosts on a segment. And once again, one host per group must respond for the group to remain active. Now, this is sort of tuned a little bit differently in version three, you would see. But again, the stipulation here is one host per group must respond for that group to continue being active. So there may be multiple receivers on a single LAN interface when it comes to the router's point of view. So as long as there is one active host, the router will keep on sending the stream out. Now, you'll later realize that actually all hosts do respond because it's version three and things work a little bit differently. But the stipulation still is as long as one responds, the router will keep on sending that stream out. The IP packet of it, the source IP is going to be the designated querier IP. To learn about designated querier, once again, go to the version one and version two lecture and you would see it there. The destination IP really depends on whether it is a general query or whether it is a specific query. So this really here should not say group specific query. It should really just say a specific query because you would see that there are two types of specific queries that IGMP version three uses. 
Now the general query, this is the periodic query that goes out all the time. This goes out on all systems multicast or 224.001. This is same as version one and version two. There is also a group specific query. So now you are basically querying a certain group. So you only want to know receivers interested in one particular group. And that is actually multicasted to the IP of that group. So this is this is same behavior. This is similar behavior to what you would see in version one and version two. And similarly for the other specific query, which is the group and source specific query. Now this really doesn't exist in version one and version two, but it is still multicasted to the IP of the group being queried, which is somewhat like version one and version two. Again, we'll go into more depth uh, as this lecture goes on. There is also the router alert option there because frankly, there are some fields in this query or the periodic queries that you would like the other routers to also process. So even though this is originating from an LHR, uh, the router alert option makes sure that the other LHRs also process the packet. Now, once again, the packet structure is complex enough that it really deserves or kind of needs the real estate of a whole new slide. So let's take a look at it. So there are new fields here. Once again, if you looked back to version one and version two, the fields in blue would be the only fields that were the fields in blue here would be the only fields that you would see there. So it was a simple packet. Now there are these new fields. There is an S, QRV, QQIC. The simplest one actually is number of sources. So that's the one I will get out of the way first. We've already discussed what the number of sources field combined with the source address field means in the membership query. I'm sorry, the membership report. And it's the same thing here. You're essentially trying to disseminate information about a number of sources that are related to this group. It could be one, it could be zero, it could be any number. But the new fields of interest here, the very first one is this S field. So the S field is the suppress router side processing field. And to really explain this, I need to explain what QQIC is first. So we will, we will circle back to the S field. The second field is the QRV or the querier's robustness variable. Now this is just a suggestion of how lossy do you expect the network to be. So how many packets on an average do you expect to lose on this particular network? The default is two. So you expect a loss of up to two packets. Now some implementations allow for its tuning and some don't. So there, there, is, uh, there are definitely vendor implementations out there that would allow you to tune the QRV, but some vendors, I, I haven't been able to find this on their routers. What you need to keep in mind is that the higher value, so if the, it can go up to a max of seven, it's a, uh, it's a one, it's a three bit field, so it can only have zero to seven. That means that the IGMP messages, more IGMP messages are resent and they are resent more frequently. So with the default of two, I think only two are sent. With seven, you may send up to seven IGMP messages. And that's just to make sure that the network is so lossy that you want to make sure that you're sending enough IGMP messages so that even one or two are lost, the IGMP messages still get to their destination. With modern day ethernet, I think that's why the default value of two is more than enough. Now, the final thing here that I promised that I would talk about is the QQIC or the querier's query interval, interval code. That is a tongue twister. Querier's query interval code. Now, what this does, it, it allows the other multicast router. So remember for periodic queries, there is an interval, a query interval that is associated with the designated querier. That is how often the designated querier will send out queries. I believe by default it is 60 or 120. I'm, I'm never very good with the defaults, but it's one of those. It's either 120 seconds or it's uh, 60 seconds. That is how often the designated querier is sending these membership queries. 
What this QQIC does, it, it allows the other multicast routers, the non-designated queries, the, the silent routers on the segment, they can now tune their query intervals to match the designated queries. So number one, if they start sending queries, they would kind of continue the tradition of the same uh, same multicast timing that the designated query was using. But they also now know how long to wait for the queries to arrive. Now, finally, the S flag. So circling back to the S flag, this informs a router not to update itself with this query uh, interval code. So that, that's all it's doing. It is informing a router not to perform any updates if a packet has the S flag turned on. Frankly, I've never seen the S flag turned on. I'm not sure what would be a reason to do that. I haven't seen it in any of the implementations, but if there was a query packet that an LHR sends and it wants the other counterparts not to update their timers, especially from that packet, then it can set the S flag and it basically signals uh, the other routers not to process. So let's talk about some IGMP version 3 mechanisms because we now know that there are only two messages. So there is a membership report, there's a membership query. Now it's time to actually see how they really, really work. And the easiest example here would be a receiver joins an ASM group, a star comma G group. And if you realize this is basically so any source multicast, uh, if you don't remember that from the last lecture, but any source multicast, that means you're signaling the group, you're not signaling which sources do you want that group from. So laying down the scenario, a receiver wants to join a group and it will send a membership report, simply a join. And this, as we discussed before, is sent to the multicast well-known address of 224.0.0.22. So again, none of the other hosts can actually listen to this message. So once this message goes out from say, let's number these hosts, one, two, three, and four, and the message goes out from host number three, it will only be processed by the LHRs on the segment. Now this was not true with the reporting mechanism of IGMP version one and version two, because IGMP version one and version two, they multicast this to the group address. That means one and two and four and anybody else who was tuned to that group would also receive that particular message. Not so in IGMP version three, only the routers listen to that message. <clears throat> now there is a record type. So remember this field here is the record type. This record type for ASM, so this is, this is in particular, a source is joining just an ASM group. This particular record type is going to be changed to exclude mode. So think back to the steady state and think back to the record changes. You are actually changing the record because in a majority of the cases, majority of the cases, the default mode for a group would be include. So the router is assuming all of the groups to be in include mode. And now the multicast, uh, multicast group wants to change for this particular group. It wants to change to exclude mode. So this is really the mode of this group. And now you want to change it to exclude mode. How does that help us though? It helps us because the number of sources, number of sources in this are zero. So you want to exclude how many sources? You want to exclude zero sources. That is the same as saying you want to include all the sources. So excluding zero sources means including every source. So if you look at these two fields, number of sources is zero. And because number of sources is zero, these fields beyond this, they don't even exist in the packet. So the packet is whatever is outside the blue. So if you look at it, doesn't that really look like an IGMP version one and version two join with just the, the group there? And that is exactly what it is. It is an ASM join and it looks like an ASM join. 
Now the recipients for this, that's a little bit different also from version one and version two, where all the hosts, all the multicast hosts listening to the, that group receive this message. Now the recipients are only multicast routers and they are receiving it because they listen to that particular group, the IGMP version three well-known group. Their actions, very easy. Either create new state for the group, if none had existed before. If you already had the state, refresh the timer. So essentially refresh the state and you know that means that the state would not now expire anymore. And that is how a receiver joins an ASM group. The next mechanism here is how a receiver would join an SSM group, a new SSM group. So a receiver joining a new source specific multicast group. So this time there has to be a mechanism to include this source specific information. Let's take a look at this. Once again, the scenario is the same. A receiver wants to join a group, it sends a multicast report, and it sends it to 224.0.0.22. It sends it unsolicited without any initiation from anybody else, and that's to reduce the join latency. We talked about all this. The record type now is allow new sources. Why, is, why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense if you look at the default mode. The default mode, like I said, was already include. So you were already include mode, and now you're trying to signal new sources. That's what you're trying to do. So you are, aren't you asking the router to allow new sources? Doesn't it make sense that way? So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to allow new sources. Now the number of sources, which was zero in ASM, the number of sources now has to be greater than one because if you need an SSM group signal, you must have some particular source that you're interested in. So a very basic example of this would be a, uh, a receiver right here, trying to join an SSM group and trying to join a single SSM group. That means it is trying to join one source. So number of sources one, there's a multicast address. This is the group address, G. And you have one source in here, which is the S. So now you have an S comma G properly signaled up to the last hop router. Uh, the recipients, once again, nothing changed here from ASM, which is uh, multicast routers. They listen to 224.0.0.2. And the action now is to create a new SSM state. So that's the only thing that has changed. Instead of creating just a state, now you're creating a new SSM state. If the state existed, refresh the timers. So that's it. It's very simply with the use of that particular record type, the last hop router was able to create a new SSM group and it was able to create a state for that SSM group. The next item here, so the next action is periodic general queries. So periodically the routers must send out something completely unsolicited and completely periodic. And they must ask all of the receivers, all of the multicast receivers on a particular subnet, which groups are they still interested in? Now this is the job, if you remember, of the designated querier. So one of the routers will be chosen as a designated querier. It usually is the lowest IP, and that querier would then send a, a periodic query out every some number of seconds. Like I said, I'm not very good with defaults, but it's something like 60 or 120, and every router and every multicast host essentially on that segment will receive this query. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to refresh the state periodically of each and every group. So <clears throat> they are sent because everybody really needs to listen to them. They are sent on 224.0.0.1 or the all systems multicast IP. The recipients now are all IP multicast devices. So some may not listen to multicast, but all IP multicast devices and specifically all of the routers and all of the receivers or all of the hosts. 
Now the actions are a little bit different when it comes to the processing of general queries in version three versus version two. The host, now some of the parts are going to remain same, so I'll put them in green. The host still start a random timer. So remember the general query has this max response code. And this is a little bit different as well if you look at it. And uh, there are some, there's some calculation that is done on this code. So really this code can either be read as number of seconds or it can be read as an exponent with an exponent and Mentisa fields in it. I don't need to go into the details of it, but ultimately what you can do with that code is it allows each and every single one of the uh, recipients to calculate a max response time. This is how long they have to respond before the router does something drastic. So you should respond in a time less than that time. So you start a random timer, which is less than that time. And again, for per active group. Now, when the timer expires, send the IGMP report. This is a little bit different. So let me actually put it in a different color here. When the timer expires, send an IGMP report. If you remember back to version one and version two, I said, if the timer expires, so if the timer expires, send an IGMP report. The difference here is the timer will expire. It was an if expire or may expire in version one and version two. And what was that if clause, if you remember? In version one and version two, the reports that come out as a, um, as a response to this particular query, they were not sent on the 224.0.0.22. They were just sent on the group. So if this particular query initiated a group response or a report response, that response would not only go to the router, that would also go to all of the receivers. And that would make those, uh, the reception of this report would allow that receiver to cancel the timer. In this case, the receivers never actually get that particular report. So they never expire their timer. And that means every single one of the group members will now send uh, the report. So that only the multicast routers listen to. That's the major change. But once again, if this sounds confusing, go back to version one and version two lecture, listen to that and come back here and you will see how the timer now will expire versus it may have expired. So one essentially in version one and version two, the streamlining fact was one member per group may would have sent a report here every single member of every single group will send a report and again just to give you a sneak preview this helps with igmp snooping feature that we will be discussing later now the actions of the multicast receivers i'm sorry i'm sorry the actions of the multicast routers on the segment they do the same stuff. They, do, they use these periodic queries for query election. They use it for state refresh when that response report comes in. So when the, the report that is sent as a response to this comes in, that goes to all of the routers on the network. And all of the routers can then do a state refresh on that particular group, the state of the group. Finally, something that is new for IGMP version three, this would be the tuning of the query interval to match the designated querier. And if you remember, we are talking about this QQIC here. So this QQIC has the querier's query interval code. And once again, it is the same way the max response code is. It, it can either be read as a number of seconds or as an exponent, but ultimately you can find the query interval from it and you can use that to match the designated queryer's query interval. The final thing here, or actually one of the final things here to discuss is when a receiver leaves a group. Now this was a separate message, if you remember in IGMP version one and version two, all of this now has been combined into the membership report when it comes to IGMP version three. And what does the receiver want to do? It wants to leave 
So let's put that in red. That's drastic, right? Leave an ASM group. ASM being the operative word here. So it wants to leave the ASM group and it sends a membership report. It doesn't send a leave group message. There is no separate leave group message in version three. It's just all in the membership report. And all membership reports are always sent to 224.0.0.22. Again, it is unsolicited, and that is to reduce the leave latency. So how, how much longer after a leave would the router still keep sending messages to that multicast group? The record type here, so once again, the record type is of utmost importance. And that is how a, uh, a last hop router would decipher a particular report. This record type is now changed to include mode. If you remember, the mode for active ASM groups was exclude and you were excluding zero sources. Now you change the mode to include, but you keep the number of sources to zero. So if you want to include zero sources, what are you excluding? Well, every single source, every single other source. That means there are no sources that you're interested in. That means it really signifies a leave, doesn't it? So the number of sources here is zero. And the packet sort of looks like this because there are no further fields after this. So the packet looks like that. And once it is changed to include mode with zero sources, it essentially is read as a leave message. So the router will treat this as a leave message. Once again, the recipients here are multicast routers because they are listening to 224.0.0.2. Nobody else hears this message. And the action is something called a group specific query. We have talked about this in version one, version two. I will be talking about this in a couple more slides, but it is a group specific query. And it is very, very similar to how it was in version one and version two. Before we discuss the group specific queries and the group source specific query, let's talk about one more scenario, which is the receiver now leaving an ASM, I'm sorry, an SSM group, a source specific multicast group. So once again, it wants to leave a source of specific multicast group. It is sending a report instead of a leave message. We've talked about all this. It is unsolicited to reduce the leave latency. Let's come to the meat and potatoes of this, which is the record type. The record type here now is block old sources. Block old sources. So remember, what is the mode for, this should say SSM, so I'll make that edit later, but this should really say SSM. What is the mode for SSM group? The mode for SSM group is include. You're trying to include some certain sources that you want to receive the feed from. And if you want to now leave those sources, well, you essentially have to block some of the old sources. You want to leave one of the source specific groups, then you have to block it. So the number of sources should be greater than one there are greater than one groups that you are actually trying to leave. So the number of sources here is one. And that makes the, well, in this particular case, I'm just leaving a single group. This is the most uh, basics of the example. So it has a single uh, source in it. And if you look at the actual packet, it would be what is outlined in blue here. So S comma G. That is what you're trying to leave. So doesn't it really look like an SSM leave? That is exactly what it is. Once again, the recipients here are multicast routers. They listen to 224.2.0.0.4. And what they do is they send a group, and this should say group and source specific query for the SSM group. And again, we'll discuss it shortly in one of the upcoming slides. It's time to talk about the group specific query. So remember when there was an ASM leave, the response from the router that was to be discussed shortly, that short is now here, was the group specific query. So when a member leaves an ASM group, 
the router pulls the remaining group members. So the router now wants to know it received a uh, leave message. Well, really now we know it's a membership report because it's IGMP version three. And the router now wants to know if there are other interested receivers in that group. So unlike general queries, group specific queries have an, are event driven. And that event is this ASM leave. <clears throat> So these are, this is actually the same as the group specific queries of, um, of version one and version two, and they are multicasted to the group IP address. So everybody now listens to this because you really want every single one of the hosts to know, hey, somebody's leaving the group. Are you still interested in that group? So if you think about it, it's going to everyone listening to that group. And now they can come up with an appropriate response. Once again, the actions of the hosts are a little bit different when it comes to version three. They start a random timer. Now this is the same as the general query response, the membership report response, but essentially it is a random timer. It is less than the max response time to leave to provide the response within a specific period of time. And this is for an ASM group. I really need to go and re-edit these slides. Uh, ASM group. And once again, when the timer expires, when, not if, send the IGMP report. And once again, the major difference is the timer will expire versus the timer may have expired. and look at the previous slide, look at the uh, general query slide, and also look at IGMP version one and, uh, one and version two lecture, if you don't understand the difference between this yet. But in this case, every single one of these receiving hosts, well, not, not the very first one, because it's actually actively leaving, every other host that receives this particular uh, group specific query, it'll also generate a membership report. So that's the major difference once again between version one and version two. For the multicast routers, once again, multicast routers, they'll do a state refresh of the ASM group when they receive the report. So that's really not the specific query part, that's the report that is a result of that. And they tune the query interval for the ASM groups and they are matching the designated querier. And if you remember, that is this particular field that is being utilized here, the QQIC. And that is all there is to know about group specific query. The very last thing that we have to discuss here is the group and source specific query. Now this is a brand new type of message. It is only applicable for, uh, for the scenario where a recipient is trying to leave an SSM group. So that's the particular scenario that will lead to the generation of a group and source specific query. Because now you really want to inquire from all of the recipients, not only about a group, but about a specific S comma G. Once again, these are event driven, and that event is a leave message on the SSM group. Once again, they're multicasted to the group IP address. That means every single recipient on the LAN will listen to this particular uh, group and source specific query. Well, as long as they are subscribed to that group or actually source comma group. So they, they will be only sent to the source comma group, but they are being multicasted on the group address. The recipients, all members subscribe to that group. That's, that's fairly easy to see there. Now the actions, once again, the host, this is I think our third iteration to this, they will start a random timer, less than the max response time, this time for the SSM group. When the timer expires, send an IGMP report for that SSM group. The major difference, once again, timer will expire versus if expires or may have expired. Finally, the multicast routers, this time there is a state refresh of the SSM group on the reception of that report. And finally, there is the tuning of that query interval 
for the SSM group and you're trying to match the designated querier. I believe this should be everything that you really need to know about the IGMP version 3. Very, very soon we will see all of this in action on actual routers, but for right now, this is really all that you need to know about IGMP version 3. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture.